So we'll begin with Isaiah 52, verses uh, 13 through Isaiah 53, 12, the word of the Lord. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them they see, and that which they have not heard they understand. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people, and they made his grave with the wicked and with the rich man in his death. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put to him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous. He shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sins of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. So powerful. So, so we're all now to, to verse number seven. And so here now we're transitioning. So this is coming now into the, the, the actual suffering of him on the cross. So now we're, 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 we're transitioning here. There's this transition here. And, and this is this is poetry. So these also could be uh, um, like verses. You know how in a song you have like three or four verses? Is everyone tracking there with me? So 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 we could actually when I when I write out the actual structure analysis, when I share it later in the handout, there's probably several verses in this and they're they're interrelated. So it's similar content. And you can see this, right? So here he is. He is oppressed. He is afflicted. And so this is, pro this is, the, um, but the key here is he opened, he opened not his mouth. So this is the key. And so the question is, this is an adversative statement here. And so this relationship here and here. And so right now we're thinking about now, we're looking specifically at fulfillment in in the, in, in the cross event. And so combining these two, what part in Jesus's ministry 
does he do this action of not opening his mouth? Does anyone remember where it is where he does not speak? During, during the trial, he, he would not answer the questions yeah. from Herod and the others. During the trial, you're absolutely correct. And during that trial, right, he was already beaten. He was struck. So this is, this is during the trial of Jesus. So by this time now in the song, if we want to speak about going more into the details, moving from his life to his death, now we're, now we're on to the trial portion where he's going to, to um, give his life. And you can, that, that is further confirmed with like a lamb. Like a lamb, he is led to the slaughter. Like a sheep that is before his shearers is silent. This is the description of him. And so notice here, okay, we are, so, so in this context, um, we are wayward lambs. He is the faithful sheep. Let's change this here. I don't like this. Let's do, we are, we are wayward sheep and he is the faithful sheep lamb of god <laughs> look at the contrast we are wayward sheep he is the faithful lamb of god so he opened not his mouth now look at this by oppression and judgment he was taken away by oppression and judgment he was taken away so let's think about this here What's going on here? And so really, in order to really understand what's going on here, this is the, the means. Or we could, no, nah, I don't like means. Let's do, this is, the, this is the manner. This is the manner by which he is taken away. And so what is oppression and judgment? So you kind of have to look at Hebrew language to really understand and pick up what's going on here. So this refers, so oppression, judgment, this is in the context of, if you can imagine, arrest and trial. So this really confirms what is being, what uh, Attorney Bullboy said. This is through uh, the manner of arresting and trial, he was taken away. And so he's taken away where? So look at this. As for his generation, who considered that he would be cut off from the land of the living. And so here, this is the, the content of the contemplation. And this being cut off here is as it sounds. This refers to his death. And it's the death, again, the, the repetition is so thick. Stricken for the transgression, and here we go. This is, this is where it becomes very strong. My people. So this is explicit here for a limiting of the atonement. So we're speaking about the specific work of the atonement. Even if, even if you wanted to see an unlimited view from a general perspective, and you didn't want to accept the, the, the doctrine of, the, of the, the limited atonement, you could still see that understanding that God is sovereign. He knows all things. And so when it comes to specific work of atonement, like, I, I don't understand, like, I guess my question is you could still see a limited atonement in, in a non-Calvinistic context, because if God knows all things and he knows who's going to believe, why would he still make a payment for people that would not? Do you see what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't make any sense because God already knows who will believe. And so looking at the, looking at the actual, the actual work. Okay. I'm not saying whether it would have been sufficient. Okay. We've already said that, but the actual work explicit here, he was cut off from the land of the living stricken for who this answers the question of who, and it is limited. It's only, he dies for his people. Oh, sir, I would like to clarify. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Jesus. Say, yeah, when you say uh, my people is, or yeah, uh, li limit, limit of atonement or limit atonement, you, are you saying, sir, that 
this only referred for those who believe and accept Jesus. Yeah, so so my people would be as would they're... be chosen, would be chosen. So who who are the ones who are chosen by God? Jesus. So we are we just are we talking just for the Israelites? Only this only only for Israelites. In this context, uh, when Isaiah said this one. Yeah, so I would argue that not even for just they're all of God's people whom he has chosen. And so some people will say in the original context, it was just for Israel. And I, and I strongly disagree with that. And here's the, let's, let's look at some examples here. Okay. So this is why in the original context, we would not want to say just Israelites. We'd want to say uh, Jew and Gentile believing. That's how we'd want to identify that. And I'm going to give, we're going to look at evidence right now. Okay. So let's go to let's go to our handy dandy handout. Okay, so I, I, I mean Bible for him. So we're on Isaiah forty two. Okay, so this is Isaiah forty two is the beginning of the of the. Um, can everyone see the screen or not yet? Can you, everyone can see it, right? Everyone can see where we're right now in Isaiah forty two, right? Everyone can see. All right, so look at this here. Behold, my servant whom I'm uphold. So this is this is the first suffering. Uh, this is the first servant song. Behold, my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights, I will put my spirit on him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. Okay. He will, he will not grow faint or be discouraged until he has established justice in all the earth, in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his law. So even here, this is, this is beyond Israel. His work is beyond Israel. Okay, let's continue on here. Thus says God, the Lord, who created heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the covenant, uh, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you my servant in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. Look at this. I will give you as a covenant for the people. <laughs> A light to the nations. <laughs> so who is my people? Who is the people? So here, it's, it's beyond Israel. And actually, in the original context, what people will argue is that the original calling of the servant was Israel as a nation, going to the nations. But then they, if you look at Isaiah 40 to, to 55, Israel as a nation, as the servant Lord fails. And so then Jesus fulfills that he comes on the scene and and in in Isaiah 40 to 55 the servant turns out to be one who's leading a group of people i mean it's so deep i mean we we're, we're going so beyond the scope of what we're discussing tonight we could do one class just on Isaiah 40 to 55 i took a phd level class just on these <laughs> so, so it's so deep so so the big takeaway Jesus without going into all those weeds is that Clearly here, you can see explicitly, I give you as a covenant for the people, a light to the nations. The people is more than just Jews. It's more than just Israel. Okay. And so coming back to here, who is my people, the transgression of my people? I, I think in the context of Isaiah, it's all those who God has chosen, Jew and Gentile. That is who his people are. For sure, a Jewish interpretation would say it's just Israel. And for sure, probably within dispensational, I don't know what they would say because, because it's the original context. If you're going to be dispensational, literal, wooden, you would have to say it's just Israel. But yet everyone uses this and applies this for the church, right? Because we are, right? So stricken for the transgression of my people, you have to include the church here, Diba. You have to. I, I don't see a, a way you can't. I mean, yeah. Is everyone tracking there with me? For, ask a follow-up question. I, I'm not trying to pressure. I just, I just, I'm, I'm looking what the text says. Anyone want want, want to make a follow-up question? Yeah. Or, just, yeah. yeah, follow up, sir. So do you mean, sir, that in this uh, limit, uh, limited atonement, sir, uh, you're saying that this only for the believers or for those who, people who accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior? Uh, that has only the importance of the atonement. 
Yeah. So what I'm saying is, is Christ actually, he was, he was stricken. I'll just be really explicit here. Okay. So coming back up here. So, so the us here is limited, right? The us is not the world. You couldn't say that it would be, it would be, it would be at the minimum Israel, which I would say it's not enough. I would say it's uh, Jew, Gentile who have uh, trust in Yahweh. Okay. So this is, who, this is who the us is. So the Lord has laid on him iniquity of the world. No, of us. So this, this clarifies explicitly whose iniquity. Okay. Yes, that's my point, sir. I'm yeah. going I'm, because I'm trying to connect with uh, Genesis one and uh, G- Genesis three. Yeah. During the fall of man, yeah. uh, when the when, uh, yeah, uh, Adam uh, did the uh, first obedience, right? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Because during that during that point uh, at the time that um, Adam had uh, disobeyed 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 God, he has already that. We receive the iniquity, or we call it the guilt, yeah. right? Yeah. We yeah. have the depravity already. Yeah. If I am correct, and that from that all all human all human beings uh, have already that kind of or we have that kind of guilt already before God. But yeah, I am so correct, the, sir. Yes, yeah, so, but the yeah. problem though is that if you so if you, that's why yeah, when ahead. you said all all nations all nations all people and all nations. Um, the, then you mentioned about limited atonement. So that's why I'm saying if if this atonement is just applicable only for those people who believe, yeah, is that uh, is that uh, correct to say that, sir? Yes, th- 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 that's that's the interpretation that we're presenting here. So, are you agreeing with that, or you're still struggling with that? I just want to be clear on on your your position. Yeah, th- that's that's my also my thinking because uh, yeah, if if the atonement is only for the believers who who, who believe who yeah. Uh, put their belief or accept that kind of belief. Uh, they put their uh, uh, what I mean uh, when they accept Lord and uh, the, Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Ray. Yeah. Uh, isn't it that the the sacrifice of Christ that was a universal act for payment of humankind's uh, <laughs> sinfulness, right? So, how do you reconcile this in so far as this text is concerned? Then it. It's a limited, although I understand that it, yeah. the only way for the application of payment is really when you re- receive God's, pay- God's payment. Otherwise, well, the nature is universal, yet it is limited to those who believe. Is that, um, is that correct? Yeah, no. So I would say that the nature is, the nature is not, it's not unlimited because once okay. the, the payment is done, everything is, pay- you have to go with universal salvation. Once, so for example, with Israel, right, when, when, when they sinned and then the, the sacrifice was offered on behalf of the people by the, the high priest, when the sacrifice was given, it was covered. It, it wasn't potential. It was done. Do you see what I'm saying? And so here, the sacrifice on Christ is, is made, and then we're going to see that it's done. It's, it's completed. Um, but putting all of that aside, so that's one part of the, of the puzzle we have to consider. The other p- part is who is the us? If you say that the us is the world, this conflicts then, this directly conflicts like literally the world without exception, without exception. So you're saying this is every single person in the world. The problem then happens when you come down here and it's, who is he stricken for? He's, o- he's only stricken for, that's limited. You, you, you've now brought in, your interpretation has brought in a conflict in the word of God. It can't be unlimited and limited. It, that, that's, those are two contradictory ideas. Um, coming further down here, his, so, so, so this is where, what I'm talking about here. So I'm just going to jump ahead so that everyone can see this clearly. So so look, so look, so look here, his soul makes an offering for guilt and he shall see his offspring. So this is again, limited. The world is not his offspring. You can never see this as being 
every every one in the world. There's no way you can see that. That that that's impossible. This is clearly limited. Um, the other thing too is that um, coming down here even even f- further. Uh, again, he bore the sins of many. This is this is limited. He makes intercession for transgressors. So let's think about this for a second. So the intercession is so fundamental. Okay, if if he's interceding for the whole world without exemption, then then in in, in a large sense, like one percent, five percent. I mean, are believers? It's a massive loss. If 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 he's interceding for the whole world, that that's the that's a he he is he is a he's a terrible right he's a terrible mediator no one would want a mediator who's like one percent success rate <laughs> yeah, like, so, yeah so thinking about thinking about the thing the same based on that reference when yeah. john spoke about uh seeing christ that here here's the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world yeah. so in most occasions people would associate it that god paid the penalty of sins of yeah. the whole world yeah 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 yeah, yeah. So with this this gives us a clear idea that it's really limited to the people or to his yeah. children. Or- yeah. So, 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 so let's think about John. Let's think about John 1 and John 3, okay? John 1 and 3, this is just dealing with Israel. And Israel can only, Israel and the people, they can only see, they can only see a, a localized savior. The Jews in Jesus' time, they could only see the Messiah saving the sins of Israel. And so when he, so when 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 John the Baptist says, Behold, the sins that the, the Lamb of God who is taking away the world, he is brought, he is broadening this vision to include Israel and nations. It's like it's like me saying. You know, we have, we have a, we have a sponsorship. We, we, you know, we have a sponsorship in the cloud seminary and, and, and we're like, we're sponsoring students. We, there's no fee. So this is non-existent, but let's say we, we had a high fee and there's a sponsorship and, and someone's like, is your sponsorship only for the, the Wadai Wadai people? And I say, no, it's for all Filipinos. <laughs> You would never say, oh, you're giving out a sponsorship to every single Filipino in the Philippines, 110 million people. You would understand in the context that the sponsorship is for Cebuano, Warai Warai, Tagalog, Ilocano. Like it's, it's, it's universal in its, in its um, offer, right? But it doesn't speak to who actually receives the sponsorship. Do you see what I'm saying? And so that's the sense. In their time, the Jews could not imagine Messiah saving people outside of Israel. Now in our day, in our church day, we can't, we can't imagine a particular view that God has a particular love for a, a specific group of people, that God has a specific work. It's like we can't imagine anything particular. Everything has to be universal. But so here, clearly... It's particular, and the benefit is this, brothers and sisters, is that if it's only a potential for all, there's not as much assurance as if you believe and you are chosen, there is no falling from grace. There is no loss of salvation. On the cross, Christ secured your atonement. You stand justified in God's mind in Christ, in union with Christ. Okay. That's the assurance that we have. And so, and so there is a massive misunderstanding because people who see, and and this here, this text is not saying that if God had ordained it, that, that Christ's atonement would have been sufficient for all. If God had hundred percent, God could have saved the entire world with that, with the same atonement, a hundred percent. God could have chosen that the whole world would have been chosen in Christ, but he chose not to do that. And so we can't, because it might be hard to receive, we can't 
manipulate or change the the content. And so here, I think I think that's you know, and 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 in fairness, you, we have to look at John three sixteen. We have to look at other in, in the context. There is a general sense that God wants all people to repent. That's the the, the Acts seventeen. He commands everyone everywhere to repent. So that that is a legitimate command. Um, but the act we're not talking about. We're talking about what God actually did and what God actually ordained in the atonement. And so I I, I don't think there's really a debate here when you really understand what's going on. Um, any follow-up questions? Is that making sense? Someone ask a follow-up question or make a comment. I'll, I'll open the floor right now. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, regarding on, on uh, my people, I agree that it's not only for the Jews because if we read in uh, chapter 52, verse 15, it say that, so you shall sprinkle many nations. Yeah. Context. Yeah. So we, we have Isaiah... 52, 15, we have 42, one, I think one to nine. There's tons of passages, even throughout Isaiah, that describe my people as being more than the Jews. So this is, so we could also refer to this being the, being the world, okay? And I do think when we, de when we define it like this, it's hard to disagree. And I think that there is when people think of limited atonement, they think, oh man, you're limiting God's work and this and that. And it's like, well, well, no, everyone at some point limits. You offer it to all, but but its efficacy is potential nalang. It's limited in its length, unlimited in its breadth. So so the one issue is so so here we have, if if we can imagine, let's let's draw diagram this here. Okay. So let me just there's several options. Okay. Yeah. Um go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, we, we, you mentioned about efficacy, and a while ago, uh, I think uh, Attorney Boboy um, uh, gave an, a kind of image also with regards to trial court that it's it's up to the to the judge who will, that will determine uh, who, who who is really guilty or convicted of the crime. And in line to that kind of efficacy, sir. Uh, I will raise the, this kind of question. Who will determine sir, the efficacy, God or the person, or per, the person, the person's decision? Yeah, I mean that's that's another, <laughs> that's another in this issue. context. Then follow up. Uh, yeah. What is now the how would define, yeah how would yeah how would we de, how would we define now God's justice in this context? Here we are completely passive. The offspring of the servant is completely passive. There, the, the, even the belief is just. It's just in the background. The primary work is on the work of the servant and then on the Lord, both in judging and, and pouring out the wrath on him and then also making those people righteous. Like our work is just not there. We're just passively receiving, right? And so when the actual atonement, it's all the work of God, a hundred percent. And we're just we're called to believe to receive it. And so you really, I mean, this passage is just so strong for my goodness. It's so strong on the sovereignty. Let, we'll come back to that at the end, Jesus. Um, I want to draw out three diagrams. Okay. So, so when we talk about universal salvation, okay, people will claim that everyone will be saved. They're referring to both. If you're looking at, this is people, and this is, this is um, to righteous, righteousness, right? They're saying, they're, so universal view, number one, is going to say it's unlimited in, in uh, uh, scope, who, who is offered, and limited in extent, right? So this is efficacious, and this is scope. Okay. That's what universal salvation teach. None of us believe that that's, that's heresy, right? The second option is what, what, what people refer to as, as unlimited atonement, but in reality, this is still limiting, right? So you're saying it's, it's unlimited in scope, but it's only limited potentially in efficacy, right? Because the condition is you have to believe to receive it. So there is a world where no one believes, Viba. So this is, this is limited in 
efficacy. Is everyone tracking there with me? And then the third position, which is limited, and I, I'm, I'm going to make a correction here. What this is saying is this is limited in scope who actually receives it. So there's the limit, but it's unlimited in efficacy. Is everyone tracking there? So in, so in reality, in reality, when people talk about unlimited return, that's wrong. This is also a limit. <laughs> really the only unlimited is universal salvation. This is the only unlimited atonement. And we would, we would categorically re reject this. So the choice is this one or this one. And so you can choose, but just know that you're limiting, you are limiting the atonement at some point. Both sides are limiting. Is everyone making, is everyone tracking there with what's going on? Everyone makes a follow-up question. Yeah, sir. Um if we said uh, it's atonement is limited, so why why we need to preach? Why we need to spread the gospel still? Yeah. If it's still limited, because because we are the means by which God brings about those people, right? So so even in this even this text, the means by which the means by which God brings about that offspring is the proclamation the revelation, the proclamation of the message. In the same way that in the mind of God, he had already, right, Ephesians 1.3, before the foundation of the earth, we are chosen in Christ, right, before the foundation of the earth. And yet Christ has to come and, and in time dies on the cross. In time, the, there's the preaching of the word. In time, the spirit regenerates, right? So just because we have the cause doesn't negate the means. Do you see what I'm saying? Because, because you're, we're saying the cause is God work alone, God, Christ's atonement. Then we're saying, oh, the means and everything else. Why are we worrying about that? And I'm saying that you're, you're, you're trying to cut off other requirements in God's uh, manifold wisdom of salvation. Does, does that make sense, Jesus? Very well, sir. Thank yeah. you so much for that. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. And, and, okay. and, and, and I, I follow up question. Someone else had a question. I saw another hand. Go, anyone else? When, when God doing something or saying something, he is always mediator. <laughs> and the goat mediator is Jesus Christ. Yeah, the, the goat, <laughs> the goat mediator. Yeah, no, that's really good. That's really good. You know, I do, I do honestly, when we describe it like this, I do think that all of our differences, whether you, you, you would still hold to unlimited atonement. I think all those differences functionally, it's all the same. I, I, I think, I, I think it's the same because even those who hold to an unlimited atonement recognize that it's limited in those who actually receive it. Do you see what I'm saying? So th th there is, it is in some sense minor, um, you know, and so I would never say someone who had a view of unlimited atonement is an unbeliever. Um, we can disagree with that, you know, I, but, but I do think that there's incredible assurance when we say that Christ secures and it's efficacious. And so this, look at this here, this is where it's just so beautiful. He shall see the offspring, his offspring, he shall see and be satisfied. If on the cross, it was just potential for all, how can he be satisfied? How can Christ be satisfied if, 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 there's, only, if there's only potential, right? So this, this comes into play with, this comes into play with, uh, <laughs> right? When you buy something, so redemption is to buy, right? Redeem, you buy back. There's other images of that. We're bought, we're bought back from the curse of the law. So when you buy something, right? When you actually put the payment down, it's sold. Tapos not. It's sold. That, even if you don't pick it up yet, right? So you buy a vehicle, you make the whole payment, but but they have to do, they have to do transactions. They have to prepare the documents. It takes several hours. It could even take several days to drive that vehicle home, diba. But once you put that money down and you sign the deed, tapos na, diba? And so here it's not, he lays out his soul for many and now he's just waiting for people to come in. It's like, no, he is satisfied. He will see, he will see it. There's this, 
There is this completion to the work that he has done. It's, it's, it's paid for. It's, it's tapos na. And so there's just incredible assurance going on here. Look at this. Uh, uh, <laughs> the question and the confusion, uh, Tim, I, I suppose from the conversation is the word efficacy. Probably you, you should explain more on what is the extent or context of the efficacy yeah. because I think that is where the confusion lies. Why Christ died for all, the effect is limited because not all will believe. And that is one aspect of the efficacy because uh, I think that's where we should, we should, you should more, uh, give more explanation on that efficacy. What is that efficacy all about? Yeah, so effic e efficacy refers to it being effective or it acts, you, we can talk about act, right? So, so the atonement brings someone all the way from being a sinner into a righteous state, it's done, tapos na. In the other sense, it's just potential. The, it's like, it's like, the, like the whole thing, it's, it's a gift that's just out there, but you have to receive it. So, so if, if it's just a, if it's, so let's say here, if, if, this is just a, if this is just a gift, right? This, this is, a, this is a, wrap, a wrapping gift, but it has to be received. The gift only goes so far and stops. You have to come and get it. <laughs> oh my goodness, man has to come and get the gift. So the gift is only potential. Is, is everyone tracking there with what I'm saying? Does that make sense, Koya, Koya Bull Boy? Um, so, so Christ's gift is just, it's sitting out in limbo and man has to bring it all the way for it to be effective, right? The, the effect is limited until it is, until it is received. And so here, when we're talking about the atonement, everyone's purchased, it's done. And it's an, it's effective because you have, you have the, the, the will, the act, the spirit the the faith and then the new birth but all of this if it's done by god by christ it's christ is the one doing it all okay so he's he's creating the faith this is these these are all these are all events okay then we can say it's the atonement is completely effective is everyone tracking there let's take a pause i i, I want to make sure that everyone is every, everyone's clear because Again, the, the, the effect is that on the cross, so let's be clear here. On the cross, we and he are here. We and Christ, in union with Christ. So on the cross, he died. And so the cross brings us from sinner to righteous with the atonement. So on the cross... So that's why we can say that we've died with Christ, right? We, we died with, Paul will say, we died with Christ. <laughs> we are crucified with Christ. <laughs> we are crucified with Christ. It is not, not I that live. Hey, yeah, go ahead. I'd like to make a follow-up question regarding the, the one raised by Jesus earlier. Yeah. Kasi nga, uh, how can God then claim his, put, give judgment to people whom they all, whom he knew already that if the offer of salvation is really intended for his people alone, then why would judge? Why would God judge people whom he has not offered that salvation to them? So, so let's take a step back, though. Okay, before we answer that question, I mean, you would agree, right, that God knows all things. Even if you were to say that God looked down the corridor of time. And, and, and saw what we would do and chose us from the beginning of time, God knew all things. So, so my question, yeah, would yeah, be, yeah. first off, why would he send his son to atone for sins of people that would never believe? And when he atones, it's, that's the redemption. It's, it's, it's purchased. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, but then again, the, the question of judgment is based on the rejection of men, right? So if that's the case, should it be that you should, God still off, God offered it still to them, although knowing that they will reject? In yeah, the same way, God offered to those have elected that they 
then these elected have chosen to believe. So at least in that way, that would be fair for everyone, because there would be judge, yeah. there would be justice for what he has done. Now, that that's how I that's my that's the yeah. the question that I like to. No, and, and, and so we have to, yeah, yeah, so so we have to wrestle with that and, and we can come back and discuss that. But you agree here that this is clearly my, <laughs> this my, is my, only, yeah. my, my only comment to that uh, team, Ray, is this is not about justice. This is about grace. That's why it's very complicated because this is talking about grace, not being just. Because if God will just be just, then all of us will go to hell. That's about justice. But yeah, because no, no of this grace, about that, we will go to heaven because of this grace. But for those who will not accept yeah. that grace, that gift, that's the one. That's those are those guys that will still go to hell because yeah. they did not accept the gift. But for those who will accept, yeah, that's the one that will be in heaven and in in heaven. That's that's where the yeah, limited that, and efficacy aspect comes in. It is only effective to those who will believe. That means to those who will accept. In the example of of Tim, the one who accept the gift. That is the one that the, 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 the gift will take effect. You become the owner of that gift. Yeah. That is the efficacy. That is the effectivity. Yeah. But if Without we, the acceptance... I, I understand from where, from what, where you're getting from now. Because the idea there is really no problem with those who already believe because definitely they have been elected. I'm just trying to ask them is how about those people whom God already judged from the yeah. very start, yeah. Yet, yet did, we're not we're not actually the one being offered to being offered for the where ah yeah. So we're not being offered yeah. the salvation. So, so, nga, yeah. Go. No, no problem with people who believe because that also that's already God's plan. But I mean, in fairness to those people, at least they will have they will have to contend with the idea that God offered for God offered them the salvation yet they rejected it and that's where justice is that would yeah, so, be more justifiable for god to them yeah. Yeah. We, we are already condemned to hell because from the beginning we're already sinful that's yeah. that's the difference we already condemned that's yeah. why god yeah. has to intervene so that the condemnation <laughs> yeah. will not go on that's why god, jesus had to come so yeah. that the condemnation will end that is why, remember in Romans 8, there is now no more condemnation because of Jesus Christ's death on the cross. Yeah. And because we have accepted him, there is no more condemnation. But you that's are where con no condemnation comes in because from the beginning, are we are already condemned. That's, that's the essence of the condemnation. So I, I do want to come back to the text, okay? But now, now, let's just be clear here. He was cut off for the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. So th this is all substitution throughout, but here, this is, this clearly limits. I want, I want to, you know, I want to push you on this because if you say that my people is the whole world, there's no assurance for us because if all these other people didn't believe and didn't, where's the assurance? Because we're just one in, in, in a lot that missed, right? Number one, number two, it just, you cannot say my people is the world. My people is clearly some, however you want to define it, Israel or Jews and Gentiles believing this is, this is a limiting factor, right? And it's not the world. Okay. So this is what the text says. We had to wrestle with that. And so I think what Ray is wrestling with is um, I hope Ray, you're wrestling with how do we reconcile, not what the text says, correct? How do we how do we reconcile with other places? Um, but that's what the text says. So I want to I want to say those things now. Concerning I, I, Bull Boy is is really accurate that we are all condemned. So without the work of God, all of us are condemned, and that is justice. So so and I think I think Ray, you, you know, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but I think the word you'd want to say is, is I, I wouldn't, I don't think you should say, is that more just because just is what Bull boy said, getting what we deserve. You'd want to say, isn't that more merciful <laughs> or gracious as Kuya Bull boy said, but to say just, no, just no. is uh, my, my point of the question is, uh, I understand already that the judgment of God will be just because all of us at the beginning are condemned. Yeah. Now, what makes it just is that they have been given the, 
the proclamation of the gospel, yet they rejected. And that's I'm what saying I'm that, trying to point what out. I'm saying that's not just because because what just is is giving us what we deserve. Do you see what I'm saying? So purely from, from a justice, so let's just be clear here. When we speak of justice, we're speaking of a law, reward or guilt, okay? So all of us fall in this category. So what's just is judgment here. So that's why I'm trying to say, and maybe, maybe we're talking past each other. If you're talking about the guilt being given to someone else, this is already, as Boboy said, gracious and merciful. We're already outside the realm of just. <laughs> yeah. I think I think if you if you ask me if, if you if you get my if you get my point, but I think I, what if the people who are not who are not saved, they might they might ask me, why would you judge me if if this thing that you have give, if this thing you have said you have not offered it to me at all? So why would you judge me on that account? Something like that. So I don't know the word is uh, judgment, uh, uh, justice, but, or fear. But but, you know? but but isn't but isn't that like isn't that like isn't that like the person who is caught speeding, and he's like, oh, there's other people speeding. Why don't you give me that offer? Like there is no, you can't, you can't argue with, with the traffic cop of saying, oh, other people speed and they're not caught. So you have to let me off. That's not a just argument. There is that, there is that same question in Romans chapter nine, that if God is just, then why, if God is sovereign, then why he does, why he still blame me for what I did, yeah. for what I do, why still blame me? Yeah. If I cannot resist him because he is sovereign, then why is he blame yeah. me for, for everything yeah. I do? The same okay. question, uh, Ray, same context and question. Can I can I share some my uh, no, my go ahead thought? Go ahead. Actually, God offered it the salvation offered all. He also oh. offered it to the unbeliever to those who are not saved because according uh, according in John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. So and then the people who believe, God called it as a his people already. Yeah. But he offered also that salvation. No, that, that's, that, that, that's what I'm trying to say, Tim. Coming from that, from coming from that verse itself, it, it tells that it is being offered to everybody. But it's just that only for those who believe, the efficacy of the salvation will come, or will take place, or will take effect. I mean. So, but right now, what we're trying to what what you have said earlier now is, um, it the the atonement was really based uh, was really for his uh, people only, my people. Yeah. So clearly, from what you have said, it is not a universal offer, diba? It is not a, it, it's still limited on the context no, that it is no, for my no, people. so no, so no, hold on. So so the 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 command so. Acts 17 is stronger than John, John 316. We, we could, we could break that. Actually, we'll do a workshop on John 316 because it is taken out of context and people use it to say things that, that yeah. it doesn't always mean. And, and if we do a breakdown, you yeah. can see that, but, but the, 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 the broader, the broader context that I'm, I'm referring to um, is, I guess not the broader, the better one is Acts 1730 here. I'll bring it up on the screen here. Acts 30. Acts 17. This is stronger. Okay, so this is stronger than 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 John 3:16. So um 3 16. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. This this should be uh, Acts 17. Okay, 30. So here we go. At times of ignorance, God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. So that's a command to all people. Okay, but in this command for all people everywhere to repent, this does not describe the work, the atonement, or the ability, right? So I could stand in front of class tonight and say, anyone who gives me a million pesos, I'll, I'll work and give them a sponsorship. You know, maybe I have the, you know, maybe I have the power, right? I'm, 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 I'm the ambassador to the Philippines, right? Anyone who gives me 1 million pesos, you know, I'm standing in front of a congregation. Any, anyone who gives me 1 million pesos, I'll give you a visa a permanent visa residency to go to the US okay now when an offer that's a legitimate offer to, to the Congress to the people that I'm before 
But that does not in any way dictate whether they have that a million pesos in their pockets or not. That's a legitimate offer, right? If, if, if you give me a million pesos, I'll give you a permanent visa. But that doesn't say to the audience if they have the ability. You ha you'd have to go elsewhere to see if they have the ability, um, what's going on behind the scenes. So this, this is a legitimate command. But we find elsewhere in scripture that no one believes, <laughs> no one repents. We've all gone astray. We've all become worthless, right? So it's the same thing with the law, right? God commands his law to be obeyed, but he doesn't give the ability. So here, let's go, let's go to a clear example that this might help. So Romans 7, Romans 7 here. Romans 7 verses verses 7, 7. So, so look at this. So let's just read through here. Likewise, brothers, you have died to the law through the body of Christ so that you belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead. For we were all living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law. So the law is not bad, but we, the, the, the law was arousing our sinful passions because it's exposing our, our behavior. But now that we are released from the law, we have died to that which held us captive so that we serve a new way of the spirit and not the old way of the written code. What shall we say then is the law sin? Because the, the law exposed our sin, because it even roused up our sinful passions, is the law sin, right? That would be, it's unfair. By no means, if it had not been the law, I would not have known sin. For I would not have known what, what it is to covet if the law had not said you shall not covet. But sin seizing an opportunity through the commandment produced all kinds of covetousness in me. Apart from the law, sin lies dead, right? So without the law, there is no sin, right? Once I, I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive and died. Not, it's all it's saying is that the, the law exposes what's in, inside, the sin nature that's in us. It has nothing to do with the corruption of the law. It's just, it's exposing something that's internal in, uh, inside us. So, so sin se seizing an opportunity so the, 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 the very commandment that pr promised life to me, the law promises life, but it speaks nothing to whether you can actually do it or not. So the very commandment that promised life proved death, <laughs> right? That's what you're saying. The, the, the promise of salvation, it must, we must have the ability. We must have the opportunity, but, but there's nothing like there's, we, we just don't know all it is, is the commandment in the same way here, the law, the law promises life, but we don't have the ability sin seizing an opportunity through the commandment deceived me and through it killed me. So the, the, the law is holy. The commandment is good and righteous and good, right? <laughs> I have the problem. So, so God, all, Christ offers the gospel to everyone. That doesn't say what is in our heart. It speaks nothing of the actual atonement. Is that a parallel so, example? Again, you have said, it's different. It's different. Like what said, like you said just yeah. just earlier that the salvation Christ offered salvation to everyone. So that, right. So it it's it's really offered to everyone. No, yeah. Is that what you're trying to say? And. Uh, yeah, so, 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 so whoever calls upon the, the name of the Lord shall be saved. Salvation is offered to everyone, yeah, yeah. but, but the actual atonement, who is actually saved? Do you see what I'm saying? There's a only difference. For those there. To believe. Yeah, only for those yeah, so to believe. you're yeah. limiting, you're limiting that salvation. Yeah. So, so that, we're saying. Trying to say earlier. Go team, go. Yeah, no. So, but what I'm saying is that the atonement is the actual salvation the mechanism, the payment is limited. It's only yeah. for those. Yeah. 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 Who believe. Yeah. So we who believe, we, but we're actually, but we're actually chosen by God, even from the beginning of time. But, but then again, the, the point there is God of Jesus Christ offered salvation for everyone. Yes, but I would but not. So, so, that. so this is, so this, maybe this is where the rubber meets the road. Okay. I would not say Christ atone for your sins, believe. I would say, repent and trust in the gospel. And if you do, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a, and if you do, there's atonement. That's what you said. Yeah. So that's why we're in, in one sense, maybe we're splitting hairs. And I think what, if, if someone were to watch this video yet, later, I think that's what I'm trying to say. Functionally, everyone understands that the, the atonement is, is limited 
Um, and I would, I would come yes, back yes. here though, that I, I do think that this, this system really shows the efficacy, right? Because here it's, mm. it's the atonement. You have a different view of what the atonement actually does. That's what I'm trying to say. The atonement yes. on the cross, the people of God were, their sins were actually atoned for mm. not potentially actually. Mm. And so now it's just, yeah. it's just in time and space, the spirit gives new life, creates faith. We have to believe. Mm. We have to believe. If there is no confession yeah, with yeah. the mouth, if there is no belief in the heart, there is, there is no application of it. But these are just all means, events. And, and so here, let's go mm. to one other passage here, man. This is, this is, we're so off the beaten trail. My goodness, here. So here, this is, this is the great chain of God's work here. And so this is why I just, I just think that we're, we're, talk, we're talking past each other, not, not here in the, in the session tonight, but concerning the debate on uh, limited atonement. So look, look, look at this here. Um, look at the great chain. Okay. So this is, this is the great, the great chain. Okay. Those whom he foreknew, he also predestined. So those who God knew before they were born, before time itself, those mm. who he foreknew, he predestined a hundred percent to be conformed to the image of the son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Those whom he predestined, mm. he called. Those whom he called, he justified. Those whom he justified, he glorified. So that's what I'm talking about. There's, 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 there's steps, but it's, it's a hundred percent. There's no potentiality. So we, we proclaim to all people repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, everyone, but only those that do there's atonement. Yeah. <laughs> there's righteousness. Yeah, that's what I'm trying. Yeah. And, and, and so maybe we're splitting hairs, Ray, maybe we're splitting hairs, but it's so important um, because the, because, and you say, Tim, well, why are you making a big deal? Because the atonement should give us incredible assurance. If we make it potential, there's not as much assurance because it didn't work for 99% of the world. The atonement was ineffective mm. for 99%. And it's like, dude, I'm not mm. investing in that. You want to invest in that 1% rate of return? Come on. But if it's effective and limited, a hundred percent, the assurance of salvation. It's offensive to talk about us falling from grace. Those who are, you know, you are in the, the palm of his hand and it's like, oh, well, you can, you can jump out. It's like, no, no. So um, we are so late here. I hope this is making sense. Let's finish this up because I do want to finish. I'm, I'm, I'm going to move fast. Okay. I'm going to move fast. Just moving along here. No violence or deceit, no violence or deceit in his mouth. This, this is, this is going, this is picking up the, this here is, um, this is picking up on uh, first Peter two, uh, 22 to 25. Look here. So, so who was the originator of the atonement It was the will of God to crush him. So people will hate about talking about, they'll say, this is child abuse. This is child abuse. Well, we can wrestle with the other issues, but this is what the word of God says. Do you believe it? That's the first thing to, to wrestle with. But, but the reason why it's necessary for the Lord to crush him is because the Lord, the Lord must be just. So this comes back to the justice issue. Sin must be punished. So the Lord being a righteous judge must punish him for us. But in the same way that he was, the will was to punish, the will of the Lord will prosper. <laughs> so it's positive, baby. He will prosper his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. So this is work accomplished on the cross. By his knowledge, 
the righteous one, my servant, will make many accounted righteous. And so here, this is so so we we've, we've been looking at here, we've been looking at here the 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 sin payment for sin. And now here we are uh, righteous, righteousness given. Federal headship. Yeah. Make many righteous. This is Romans 5, baby. Come on. Romans 5, 12 to 21. Make many righteous. So his sacrifice is not just covering our sins. He's bringing us into a right a righteous status with regard to the law, because the law is fundamentally positive, love God and love others, which we can never do perfectly. And so he's already giving us this righteous, and you see this here, look at this, look at the parallel. This is negative, this is positive, this is substitutionary atonement. If ever there was a perfect place, if ever there is a perfect place of what substitutionary atonement, where it is, make many righteous, bear their iniquities, negative, positive. And notice here, it doesn't say, there, remember, there's no potentiality here. He will make, he will offer righteousness to all, <laughs> right? That's an unlimited view, right? He will offer righteousness to all, but but be effective for none. You have to bring it the other way. No, he will make righteous. He will make righteous. So there is no potential. He will, I will divide him a portion with the many. And so this here, oh my goodness, this is, this is air, air inheritance. Come on. Yeah. Come on inheritance baby and so then there is this he shall divide the spoil and so this is actually this is like victorious victorious um conquer battle conquest so we have we've had um agrarian context here we've had judicial context now we have warfare kingdom context the whole shebang, baby. He poured out his soul with uh, to death, and so now we're bringing up. We're bringing up Adam's curse. We're bringing up Adam's curse. We have to see a bigger picture than just Mosaic law. He poured out his soul to death. He was numbered with the transgressors. He bore the sins of many. Not the whole world, because if he bears the sins for the whole world, everyone's saved. It's like, it's like, it's just like the, the incredible power. If he bears the sins on the cross for the whole world, everyone is literally saved and you have universal salvation. He bore the sins of many. And this also, come on guys, this, this is Romans. We looked at this in federal headship, what Paul is saying, big dog, Paul, Romans 5, 12 to 21, all in Adam die, all in Christ are made alive limited. We talked about the federal head is limited to those that are in Christ. And then notice this, inter this is priestly, priestly activity. He makes intercession for transgressors. And this is the great high priestly prayer in John 17. Come on. <laughs> He's the priest. He, he offers the sacrifice. He prays the prayer and then he gives his life. Come on. So powerful. And again, if he's intercessing for the whole world, terrible turnover. Terrible. So he's interceding for people who will never believe who are not chosen. Does not make sense. Let me be clear here. This does not mean that he has a general love for all. He has he has a, a common grace love for all. I'm not saying that at all. Does he does the command to repent is for all? Okay. But in time and space, he has come to do the will of God, and the will of God is for him to save his people. Let's go to John 17. I want, I want, you, to, I want you to see this. This is, this, this is so, oh my goodness. Look at this. Father, the hour has come to glorify 
your son, that the son may glorify you since you have given him over him authority over all flesh to give. So look at this, to give eternal life to whom you have given him. This is particular. This is not the whole world. He's giving eternal life only to those, to those who you have given him. And this eternal life is to know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work you gave me to, to, to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence that I had with the glory that I had before the, the, the beginning of the world. I manifested your name to the people. Look at this. I manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the, the world. Yours they were. And you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Brothers, this is limited. This is particular. They know everything that you have given me is from you, for I've given them the words that you gave me, and they received them and have come to know the truth. Look at this here. If ever I am praying for them, I am not praying for the world but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. Mine are yours and yours are mine. I I am glorified in them. So again, this is not that God doesn't love all people, that that he's happy with the judgment of the wicked. There is, I'm I'm asking us to have a a particular view of the church, the people of God, And this will bring us incredible assurance. We won't be running around with our identity and what we do. And if we don't do enough, if we don't have enough faith, we're dead. Incredible assurance. Christ intercedes at the right hand of God for us. A hundred percent effectiveness. His mediation is perfect. And so we're going to close with this tonight. Jesus' fundamental work as the servant of the Lord is to make a vicarious, substitutionary, and let's do this here, effective, effective atonement for his people, which included the bearing the guilt of their sins on the cross, receiving God's wrath and punishment, making them righteous through his perfect obedience And this included the closely connected work, interceding to the Father on behalf and actually receiving the fruit of his labor. So the message is for all. Repent, believe, submit to the Son, the King of the universe, God's chosen one. And if you do, there's atonement. (laughs) If you do, there is life. But if you don't, voila. Nothing. Let's close in a word of prayer. And I want to pray 